What is going on guys? Welcome to part 2 of my modern weather app design. In this section, we are actually going to take the design that we built in the previous section and turn it into a React app. So, if you guys um, haven't seen part 1, make sure you guys click the link in the description or go watch the first part if you're interested in actually designing the project. If not, then stick around to this video uh, and I will make sure to give you the image files. Okay, so if you guys want to follow around with me, you are going to click on the link in the description. It is going to take you to my GitHub and it is going to take you to the folder right here. What you are going to do is download it. You're going to download the zip or clone it. It's up to you. And you are going to delete everything except the folder called images right here this is the one that has the images from the previous section so this is the only thing that you need okay so uh, once you have that you should have a folder on your desktop just like this with the images and if you have that then you're good to go okay you are also going to need to sign up to the uh, weather API that we are going to use for this project and what you're going to do is you're going to go to openweathermap.org. This is the API that I chose. It's not too fancy, but it's free and it does the job. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to this website. You're going to click on sign in, put your email and whatever. It's free. Once you're signed in, it's going to take you to this window. And all you got to do is click on API keys and it is going to generate an API key for you here. You guys, um, if you want to copy this one, sure, you can go ahead and do that. Um, in general, you know, you guys don't want to be showing your API keys to people, especially if you want to put it on the internet and stuff like that. But since this one's free, really doesn't matter. So uh, just go sign in, create your API key. And then once you're done with that, Basically, uh, I'm going to show you, I copied the request that we are going to be sending to this API, so we make it very easy. So I went and um, we are going to get the weather for LA and Moscow. So I got the city IDs. This is how that API works. You need the city IDs. So this is for LA, this is for Russia. And then this is the request that we are going to be sending right here. So we're sending it to the API, weather map, blah, blah, blah. Here's the ID for the first city, comma. Here's the ID for the second city. And then you got the units, imperial. And then after that, you got your app ID. And app ID is equal to the, uh, the actual um, ID that you got from the website itself, the code, your personal API key. Okay. So, uh, copy and paste this. I'll also leave this in the description if you guys want to use it. I'll leave out the API key so you guys can put your own. But if you want to follow me exactly, you're going to get LA and Russia. If you want to get your own cities, you're going to have to go to the website and find the city code that you want to get. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to do it this way. So, just copy and paste this link. Okay, so now we have the link. We have the images we're good to go you guys let's quickly copy and paste this um, request and see what happens so i'm just gonna do copy fire up chrome and send the request and as you guys can see it is returning for us a json with two countries or two cities one is for la right here and the other one is for moscow uh we are not interested in half of this stuff uh the stuff that we are going to use from this api is the weather.main right here and we are going to use the main.temperature which is right here everything else we're not going to use okay awesome you guys we are ready to start coding so let's create a new folder somewhere on your computer uh, let's just call it weather for now I'm gonna go in and I am going to right click and open with VS Code. Make sure you guys have VS Code installed. I'm going to hit Control tilde to open my terminal. And we are going to uh, do npx create dash react dash app. And I am going to put dot. Hit enter. And it is going to do its thing. Okay, so it's done installing. 
Uh, what I'm going to do next is I am going to open the folder. Make sure it's the right folder right here. I am going to go into source and then I am going to move the image folder right here. Okay, I'm going to come back to Visual Studio Code. Let's see. Let's open app.js and let's look at it. I'm going to hit Control L to clear my terminal and then I am going to do npm start and let's see what we have. Let it run and usually the first time it takes a little bit of time but it's okay let it just run and there you go you guys we have a boilerplate that is running right now it looks great but we don't need half of this stuff so let us first start doing some cleanup okay i don't need the svg right here i'm also going to delete it from here okay uh, we don't need half of the stuff right here. I don't want to return uh, anything. I, I just want to return a main for now. And we are just going to say hello. Let's uh, save this. See what we have. So we got hello. Okay. We did some cleanup. Let us go into um, index.js. Let's do some cleanup over here too. I don't need the service worker. I don't need this stuff. Let's take out the service worker. And we can save that. And then we can go into, let's see, index CSS. Yep. Let's clean up some of the CSS in index. I am just going to copy it from the, the project that I already worked before this video, but we are going to go over the CSS. Basically, I'm just giving everything a, a zero margin and a zero padding. And then for the background, I'm giving it the linear gradient, our blues right here. And I am giving it the font that we used in the design, which is called Nirmala, okay? So right now, if I save this, let's see what happens and you guys as you can see we got the background now next what is next we still have some cleanup to do i'm going to close index because we're done with it let's go in public because i like to do some cleanup over here too let's remove some of this stuff and then remove some of this stuff and some of this stuff as well and then for the title of the app let's just call it uh modern weather app Cool. and we are done with this for now now let's go into the app dot css because we need to do some work over here now let me see what i have done over there okay so basically uh we are going to delete all of this stuff and in my app i have a main so what i'm going to do is let me copy it from my file I'm going to throw it here. And by the way, you guys, I'm, I'm going to be copying and pasting the CSS because we got a long project. We got a lot of stuff to cover. We got props and all kinds of stuff going on. So this stuff is not important, basically. But I will still go through it. OK, so we have a main. Basically, I'm setting it to 100 viewport height, setting it to flex and then justify content space evenly and ally items center. So basically, I'm just centering the stuff, whatever is going to be inside the main is going to be centered okay so if you look right now the hello is right here it's centered right in the middle of the file of the page cool everything's cool all right perfect let's move on i don't want to use any classes in this project so i'm going to convert this to a functional component so instead of class app blah 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 i am going to say const app and we don't need the extends or component just going to say const app is equal to an arrow function just like that and then it it doesn't render anything because that's just for classes all it's going to do is return and this should do it this is this and this is that and let's just fix some of the spacing okay we're good and we don't need component right here Okay, so right now if I save, nothing should happen, nothing should change. We still have everything is over here. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, instead of hello here, what do we want to do? Well, we want to build the left half of the design. Uh, let me go fetch the design and open it so I can switch between it and look at it with you guys. Okay, so I'm back. I got the image open. So 
uh, right now what we are going to build is this section right here plus we're going to throw in the background image right here okay let's do it so uh, what I want to do is create a component so to do that I'm going to go into source I click source right click new folder uh, let's call it components and then inside the components folder I am going to create an info component so we'll create a new folder call it info and inside info I am going to create a new file I will call this info.js okay now info.js is gonna be another um, functional component so we're just going to say import react from react just very quick and then I'm going to say const info is equal to an arrow function that will return uh, let's see what do I want to return let's return a section cool and that should have closed my section by the way but it didn't and then we are going to export default info okay perfect let's do hey for now and now I'm gonna go back into app let's import it so import info from components info info and then I'm gonna come here instead of saying hello I am going to throw in our component hit save go back and we should see hey now the hey is coming from the info component perfect okay now first things first uh, let's look at this thing let's do the the little squiggly thing the wave okay let's do that real quick so we need to uh, make sure you're inside info.js we need to import import um, I'm just gonna call it BG and then we need to go one step back one step back we need to go into images and that one is called the BG shape dot SVG cool and then inside this section let's throw in an IMG and the source we will set it up to BG and let's just give it an alt we will call it um, background shape or something let's give it an ID too so we can style it and we'll call it BG cool let's save this let's go look at it and as you guys can see it's here but it's all messed up we need to do we need to throw in some CSS on it okay so inside the info folder let's create a new file we'll call it uh, info.css I guess yeah let's do info.css let me go to info.css let me grab the styling that I did for the BG and throw it in okay so basically what do we have here I set its position to fixed and then I set its top and left to 0, 0 so it goes to this corner and I set its Z index to minus 1 so it goes uh, further in the background so everything else stacks on top of it okay so now if I do save I go back here oh of course forgot to import it so we need to import info that's all we need okay now we imported the CSS sorry about that guys and as you guys can see now its position is fixed with a top zero and a left zero and is the index of minus one perfect okay what's next let us do the weather me now okay let's do it so we will jump back into our info and I am going to click right after this it is going to be an h1 and we are going to say weather and then I want to do a break the line right me and then I'm going to throw the span or I'm going to throw now inside a span so we can style it okay I threw the now inside the span so I can give it a different color this is the picture and this is what we have so far weather me now 
Okay, let's throw in the horizontal uh, rule too while we're there. Uh, we're gonna come back here and after the H1, let's just do HR. HR and done. Uh, what else? Since we're here, why don't we just do the, uh, the little description too here. Uh, minimal blah blah blah. Just gonna copy it. It's gonna be a paragraph. And I am going to copy the stuff that I typed and paste it here and save. Oh, and before I forget, some people were complaining that they couldn't see. So I am going to zoom in so these people can see. And hopefully this is zoomed enough for you guys to see. Okay, we saved. Let's see what's happening. Okay, so we got Weather Me Now, a minimal weather app designed to brighten up your day, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's throw in some CSS on this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go into info.css. Okay, let's get the H1 and all this stuff. Okay. And you guys can pause the video and go through this one by one. Okay, so the first thing is the H1. I gave it a big size. A color I played around a little bit with the line height and gave uh, a text align to the right okay so the text can actually align to the right and then the span which is the one that has the word now in it this thing we give it the pink color here's the HR just a margin and then the paragraph which has the same white kind of bluish white color okay so now let's save this. I am going to come back and look at that, you guys. Here's the design. And here's this thing. Pretty close, right? We're getting there. Okay. Now let's work on the bottom section. This thing right here. Cool. Okay. For that section, we are going to throw it inside a class that is called um, bottom. I mean a div with a class that is called uh, bottom. So here's my div. Uh, we're going to do class name is equal to bottom okay now inside this div we're gonna have another paragraph that says your weather is currently showing in cool and then i am going to have another div inside this thingy this one is going to have a class name of buttons buttons and then I'm gonna have two buttons in this okay so the first one I am going to have a div uh, with a class name that's equal to btn this time cool inside this div I will actually have the button itself so whoopsie I'll have a button and then this button is just gonna say C. Cool. I need to set a, a P right here, a paragraph. Celsius. Sweet. Okay, let me save and see what's going on so I can follow. Okay, there you go. We got the C and we got the Celsius. Now let's copy and paste that so we can do it for the uh, Fahrenheit. Okay, so here's here's the first button. And here's the second button. This one is going to be F. And it's going to be Fahrenheit. Okay. Uh, let's save. Let's go. Let's look at it. It looks ugly. It looks terrible. Let's throw in some CSS on it. Cool. So I'm going to go to info.css one more time. Let me copy all this stuff and then we're going to go through it. Don't worry, you guys. So the bottom is the whole section right here that is called the bottom. The whole thing at the bottom. This whole section. This whole thing. This plus this plus this is in a div called the bottom. Okay. So let's go through that CSS. I just gave it a margin top of 100. And it's displaying flex, justify content space between, align items in the center. So basically what it's doing is just spacing things out, making it into a row and spacing things out. Okay, that's that. Now for the buttons, I want to display them flex. 
right here. This this class has two buttons. So I set them to display flex so that they're side by side. Okay. And then uh, each button itself is displaying flex, but in a column. So you can have the button plus the Celsius or the Fahrenheit word underneath it. This thing. So they're flex column. So the button and the text is under it. Okay. Right here. Then I took the first child, the first button, and I gave it a margin right of 20. So I can separate it. And then the button itself here, I gave it the font, font size, bold, no borders. Give it a background, you know, the color of the text. Here's the border radius, width, height, margin, cursor pointer. Nothing special for this. Okay. And then for clicked, this is going to be the state when you click on it. So it's going to turn the background into the pink and the text into the white. It's going to flip. So the clicked is this one, and this is the normal um, styling on the button. This is the white button. This is the one that's clicked. White, clicked. Okay. Now, if we save this, now let's actually see what happened over here. And there you have it, you guys. See? But now, this section is done. But when we click on these buttons, nothing is happening. We need a way to make the button change colors and stay pressed down. So the way we're going to do that is with hooks, basically state inside a functional component. So the way that works is actually very simple. All we got to do is create a state. Let us call this state. Um, let's see. Uh, well, the way it works is first, you're going to have to destructure the use state hook for now. That's how it works. And then we're going to have to import uh, from React the actual use state. So you say use state. All right. And uh, after that, we will do. Hmm. Let's see. What do we want it? What do we want to start with? OK, so I want the default state to start in Fahrenheit. That's the default. So I want the Fahrenheit button to be pressed by default. And then we want to store that inside something called maybe a temp symbol. Sounds good. And for the function that is going to change that, we will call it set temp symbol. Okay. Now React is going to complain. Let's not worry about that. That's easy. So now what I want to do is take the uh, state which starts as Fahrenheit, and I want to pass it into my actual uh, component. So how do we do that? Well, with props, let's create a prop. We will call it temp symbol, and I am going to pass it the actual temp symbol from state right here. Okay, so uh, I am going to do that. And we also need to pass the function that is going to change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So the way we do that is we are also going to create another prop. We'll call it set temp symbol. And then this one is going to be a function that is going to to run the set temp symbol and what it's going to do is it is going to say if the temp symbol equals 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 Fahrenheit with a capital letter then change it to Celsius otherwise we will keep it as Fahrenheit Okay, let me go through this because this might confuse you right now. Okay, so we set a state right here with something called temp symbol that's going to start with a Fahrenheit, which is a string right here. This is going to be stored here. And we have a function that we can run that is going to change this. Okay, so we pass the state to the prop right here. So we have temp symbol is temp symbol. And we pass the function itself into the state, I mean, into the component itself right here. This is the prop. 
and here's the function what does the function do it's gonna run a function that calls this and says okay hey check the temp symbol right now what is it is it fahrenheit yes so if it is fahrenheit then set it to celsius otherwise keep it fahrenheit we just pass these two things into our component now we need to use them in our inside our component so i'm gonna go into info and i need to pass in props into the function and now i have access to those two props which are if you guys are following me it's gonna be props dot temp symbol and props dot set temp symbol now I have access to both the both these babies right here. Okay. So where do I need to use them? Well, I need to use them in the buttons right here. So this one right now is set to uh, this one is the Celsius. So what I am going to do is instead of doing it this way, I am going to check for the props dot uh temp symbol i believe we called it yeah so if the props dot temp symbol equals celsius i want this button to have the class name of the one that we called clicked and this has to be an if statement so uh just like that otherwise i am going to have a button that doesn't have the click state on it but instead what it's going to do is it is going to have the on click call so the on click is equal to a function that will call the props dot set temp symbol okay let's see if you guys are following me so uh, when i get into this function i'm passing the props now i have access to the symbol and the set temp symbol function now i'm coming into this button now this button i'm saying is the symbol celsius well if it is celsius then i want you to set its class name for this button to clicked which is this one if you guys remember so it's going to change it to pink if it's not, then it means it's the white one. Then I need to give it the function that is going to allow me to change it. You see what I'm saying? It's going to allow me to change it to the clicked one. Basically, this is all I am doing. And hopefully this makes sense for you guys. Let me let me do it for this one too. So maybe, maybe it, you, you might understand it even better. So right now, what I want to do is check the props dot temp symbol is that already fahrenheit so right now we know that it is already fahrenheit right and because it is already fahrenheit i want this button to return with the class name of clicked basically i want this button to be rendered in with that class with that pink class that's going to change the background of it to pink well if it's not pink that means it's in the white uh, it's the white button and in that case I want you to give return me a button that's gonna have an on click event that is going to take it and set it and call the the function from the props so uh, this one on click it is going to call props dot set temp symbol okay hopefully this makes sense let's go see what's going on so uh nothing is happening let's see why this is not working so as soon as i load this page this should be pink but it's not for some reason so we gotta figure out what is going on so here's my button let me check my code Props.temp symbol is Fahrenheit. Yes, it is. So I want you to return a button with a class name called clicked. Yes. Otherwise, you're going to return for me a button with an on click to set temp symbol. 
yeah this is it this should be working but it's not why of course because charlie my friend you need to oh, oh wow that's weird it never complained Whew. that is funny react should have complained i basically never i forgot to close in the brackets for this thing and what am I doing, man? I can't even write code today, you guys. I am so sorry about that. Now, this is going to make it work. <laughs> and there you have it. Sorry about that, you guys. I was just messing up my if statement right here. But anyways, so when the component loads, the initial state is F right here. So when we go inside the info component, it's going to say, oh, F is actually... Um, coming from state so i'm gonna take that button i'm gonna set it uh, i'm gonna give it the class clicked otherwise we know because now the c is not uh clicked so it doesn't have the clicked function on it what it has is it has the set symbol function on it which when i click on it it's gonna check if it's c turn it to f if it's f turn it to c so right now i'm gonna click on it and there you go now this one became pink now when i click on this one and there you go this is f this is c f c f c f c so basically in short when the button has the style clicked on it that's it that's all it has when it's the white one it's gonna have the function the click the on click event on it so it's gonna check and switch it from c to f there you go we got the first section of the app done okay let's move on now let's create uh, this section right here so the the plan of attack is basically we are going to create one component that we can use multiple times and just send it some props and it's going to change its image its weather all that stuff so basically we're making use of react components right because you the idea is you create one component and you use it multiple times so let's create a component we'll call it maybe like country or something i don't know for now let's uh close this info folder we don't need it we are done with info bam go away i don't want to see you ever again <laughs> okay uh let's go to components right here i'm gonna click on components right click uh let's create a new folder we will call it maybe country and then inside country i need a new file uh i will call it country.js and let's also create a country.css uh, country.css okay that is cute uh, inside country.js let's create a functional component so we'll do import react from react whoops see that easy let's import the css as well and let's do const country is equal to a functional component that is going to return and i want to return a section cool for now let's return a section and then we will do export defaults country cool Let's throw in something in here for now. Hello. Hello. And then let's import uh, this baby right here. So we'll do import country from components country and country JS. Now we have it imported. Let's come here and let's throw our first country just like that let's go check we should have hello hello babe yeah okay and we know we have two of those bad boys so let me do that so now we have two countries let's go check them out we got hello and hello oh wow okay let's move on now let's go into country js and instead of returning this useless word let's actually put in some information all right so what do we want to return let's see i am checking my code i have a div with a class name of floater for some reason 
don't ask me why but inside that floater we have another div with a class name of icon dash temp inside that icon dash temp we have an image and for that image we are going to need some images so let's import let's call it sun this is basically the sun icon let's import sun from let's go back one more folder images slash uh what was it sun icon and then let's copy and paste this we'll call this one snow and this one my friend is going to be images slash this one okay cool so now inside this image right here we will do source equals sun and alt equals sun i guess for now right after the icon we will have a p a paragraph with um let's say for now we'll do like 90 um 0, 1, 7, 6 degrees this is just fake for now until we get our information from the api and we will give this one an id of temp cool and then we have let's put in another paragraph right here again i am checking my code to make sure that i am following it uh, exactly and we will just say sunny now all this stuff obviously we are going to get from the api so i'm just putting dummy text for now okay we got that we got the div and then let's actually throw in the uh image of the actual image let's do import i'm gonna call it ka for california and let's import the image of california which i believe is pick one and then the second image we'll call it are you for mother russia and we are going to uh i believe it was pick two and i just love to delete and rewrite stuff okay so let's return uh, an image with source equals um, california we'll give it an alt so react doesn't complain we'll do los angeles and let's give it an id of country dash img perfect after this we are going to have one more div and we are done now this div is going to be it's going to have a class name of country and inside this we are going to have two divs we got one div and we got another div in here this div is going to have um a paragraph actually two paragraphs uh this one is going to be uh los angeles and then this one is going to be california and then i'm going to copy these two i'm going to come into my second div hit enter paste and this one is going to be moscow and this one is going to be Russia and this should be it okay and save this are you defined never used let's not worry about that I'm gonna come here and let's see what we have okay we're getting there uh, let's throw some CSS real quick copy all this stuff from my original code paste it here let's go through it the floater which is the main one has a background color position absolute width, a border radius 
of 130 130 oh and if you guys were following me with the design tutorial you know from the 130 130 that this floater is actually this little pink tag okay and then i give it a little margin some padding text align center and a box shadow okay the icon temperature is the container that holds this stuff right here the sun with the 90 and the sunny it's just display flex align items in the center the temperature right here just some font stuff the country image here's the border radiuses this curve and this curve right here with the box shadow and then the country itself just some text align margin top nothing too fancy the stuff at the bottom and then the last child i'll just made the font a little bigger which is basically this stuff okay now let me save this go back into our design and this is the actual app right now don't confuse it with the image you guys here don't confuse it with this baby this is the actual react app okay this is what we have so far we are actually very close if you guys can see now why do i have moscow russia and then moscow russia right here twice are you guys following me why are these images the same why is the temperature the same why is the icon the same why does it say sunny on both hmm interesting so i did this on purpose because i wanted you guys to see the problem that we are facing right now it is because we are basically throwing in the component twice now okay i understand what, that we are creating one component and we're gonna reuse it but how do we change the images and the temperatures and all this text and stuff and make it unique for each one yet using one component hmm. the answer to that is we are going to use props okay so the idea is we are going to fetch the weather information from the api right now and then we are going to pass the name of the city the temperature into the into each component and then based on that we will change the images we will change the temperatures so they become unique okay let us go and fetch the data finally from that weather api okay before we do that we need somewhere to store those data we need somewhere to store that information so guess what we are going to use another hook this time um let's see uh use state this time i want to once i fetch all the data i want to throw it inside an empty array so we will set the default of the state to be an empty array now what do we want to call this stuff let's say we want to call it cities and the function we will call it set cities cool so now i have a hook that is ready to receive all this good stuff now how do we fetch stuff inside functional components well in class components you would just throw in um a lifecycle function uh, like component did mount component will mount but inside functional components you throw them inside something called a use effect so the way you use that is first you gotta import it we will import use effect and then over here we will say use effect and it is basically going to run a function that does whatever we want just like that what do we want to run in here we can do like uh something called function fetch data stuff like that and then we can go and then call fetch data but i'm not gonna do that i want to be fancy I am going to do an iffy and then have it run itself right away. So the way to do that is we are going to do um, and I want to do async too. So I'm going to do async function fetch data just like that. And as soon as I fetch my data, I want to run this function. So that's I saved myself one line of code 
hey, it's worth it for me if you ask me. Okay, so we got our async function. Now we gotta await for something. What do we wanna await? We wanna await our fetch. So we will say const um, response is equal to await fetch. And what do I wanna fetch? I wanna fetch that URL. This little baby, the one I showed you from the step earlier. Okay, so now I have an async function that is going to await for this fetch. Now, once it fetches this stuff, it's going to put all that thing, all the data inside response. Now, I need to parse that stuff. So I will say const data is equal to await response.json. And now I have json data now if we console log this data we will see that it is let's see let's do it console console.log data now i'm gonna save but i am going to immediately uh unrun this um thingy i'm not gonna run it why because i figured this thing the hard way i got banned from this api because apparently the use effect keeps on running and it doesn't stop running unless you pass it in this second kind of argument. Don't ask me why, I don't know why, but if you don't pass it in like an empty array into this use effect, it is gonna keep on running and running and running and running and running and every time it's running, it is sending a request to that api and that api is complaining and it's like bro what the hell are you doing you're sending me like five gazillion requests a second so i'm gonna ban your ass basically that happened to me and that is why i just uh canceled the the i just stopped running the application but now since i put this for some reason i don't know why i'm still figuring it out but once you pass this second argument into the use effect uh then for some reason it just calls it once just just go with it okay so now i'm going to save right now and then i am going to run this thing one more time let's wait for it modern weather app nothing is here this is all good let's go into the log baby and other than these things that we will fix later on let's we see we have an object right here that has a list of two objects in here and as you can see we have an array of two things right here the first one bam i see los angeles i see temperature i see good stuff so basically we got the information congrats you guys okay so we are fetching the data everything is fine now what do we want to do with that data well, obviously we don't want to console log it we want to save it in, in our app right how are we going to save it well we are going to use this function right here to set the state. It's as simple as that. We are going to do set cities. And we are going to pass it the data. But specifically inside the data, there is a property called list that has those two cities in there saved. So now if I save, I have cities, which is an array of two items. Item one is going to be Los Angeles. Item two is going to be uh, Russia. Okay, now we have it saved. Everything is cool. Now we can start to pass the state into our countries. We will say cities. I'm just going to give it a prop name called cities. I'm going to pass it cities of zero for this baby. And then for the second one, the cities prop is going to have cities one okay that's that and then i also realized that we need to also pass in the temp symbol and i will show you why in a bit let's just pass it the temp symbol prop two as well and uh for this one we will pass it the temp symbol two and temp symbol, of course, because I seriously, I like honestly, you guys, I just can't type code today uh, for some reason. I just can't. Okay, so bear with me. 
know if you want to bash me in the comments that's cool too but seriously i can't write code today i'm sorry save now we passed cd0 and cd1 into the same actual component now let's go fix all this mess let me see first is anything happening nothing is happening first so let's fix this stuff and this stuff okay first we'll fix this thing at the bottom okay so let's go in our country component so we need to get props and what i'm gonna do is let's check right about here right here i'm gonna say is the props dot cities array empty or does it have stuff in it if it does and the props dot cities dot name equals 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 los angeles and i am not going to make the mistake from the last time there you go so if we are talking about los angeles then i will pass a div with los angeles otherwise i will pass a div with moscow and just like that my friends we solved the first issue let's save and confirm that we actually fixed it and there you have it you guys now it's not showing both california and russia it's only showing one why because we used the actual props to get the state and check conditionally now are we getting the city that is los angeles well the first one is getting city zero and the city zero dot name is los angeles and because it's los angeles it's only going to return this div but the second one is russia moscow so it's not this one so it's gonna say okay i'm gonna return this one cool this makes sense right okay now let's go fix one more problem up there which one do you guys which one do you guys want to fix let's fix this one let's write an if statement to fix this one okay how do we fix this one pretty much the same thing you guys I am going to say is the props dot cities not empty and the props dot cities dot name equals 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 Los Angeles is it Los Angeles well if it is Los Angeles then return an image then return the Los Angeles image if it's not then i want you to return the image of russia and you can say here like moscow and done look at that we solved one more problem and no we didn't we messed it up something is happening let's see what's going on so uh i have a div Okay, I have props.cities and pro oh, process, process. Really, bro. Really, bro. You got to embarrass me like that on YouTube, bro. Bro, there you have it. Russia on the right, California on the left. Russia on the right, California on the left. Oh, okay. So we fixed this problem and we fixed the image problem. Uh, you guys, this should be very easy right now. Let's fix it. The icons the text and then this stuff let's move on let's move on now instead of sunny right here instead of sunny what i wanted to do is this one is a little bit tricky uh instead of sunny i am going to get the information from the props dot cities right but what i'm gonna do is first jesus christ man why does it change stuff like this props.cities i'm gonna check does it exist is it not empty is it undefined is it null if it's not then we're good to go then i will get props.cities dot weather zero and basically that's i'm just 
traversing through the tree of the API that we got, the JSON that we got. This is not, there's an array inside the API called weather. I'm getting the first one. And then I am going to go into something called main. And I want to do two upper case. Otherwise, return empty okay so now what i'm doing is i'm checking if props.cities exists if it does get the city uh, get the weather otherwise set it to null set it to like an empty string and the way i'm going is well props.cities this is what we're getting from the prop okay there is one more uh, property called weather it's an array we're accessing the first item and then inside that there is something called main which has the actual weather in it Okay, to uppercase and then I'm just uppercasing it so now if we save this go back right here oh look at that it's actually misty in California and clear in Russia so now let us do the icon the Sun icon the images right here so we will say does props dot cities exist it's not zero it's not null it's not undefined and props dot cities dot name equals Los Angeles if it's Los Angeles we will return the image of the Sun otherwise we will return the image of the snow and then this one we will call it snow let's go check it and there you have it sun and snow now what is left we need to get the temperature okay so let's get the temperature um so what I will do here is instead of this 90 thingy, what I will do is I will say uh, props.cities exists. If the props.cities exists, then I will return props.cities. And what was the thing called? It was called main.temp dot main dot temp let's save that something is not right uh, oh yeah because I need to say or okay so now if you guys can see it says 58.24 48.34 it's like weird it's not cool this is not nice not presentable Plus, we need to switch this stuff from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So what do we need to do to fix that? Well, it's very simple. We need to come up here and create our own custom function. So uh, let's see how we want to do this. Let's say let I'm just going to create a variable here. Current temperature is going to be zero if props.cities only if prop.cities basically the way this this basically means if prop.cities not equals null or not equals empty or props.cities you know basically when you just uh, omit the conditional this becomes a truthy statement so it will only run if it's true so if something is full if it has information then it's true so it's gonna run okay that's this is just a shortcut okay so if props.cities means there's something inside it that means it's true then we're gonna run the code inside this what i want to do i'm gonna say let fahren height and i want to parse int so i can remove the dot like 51 dot point blah blah i don't need the point so we're gonna parse the int what do we want to parse? We want to parse the props.cities.main.temp. Okay. So I want to parse that. And then I'll say let Celsius again is parse int. 
and what I'm gonna do is I am going to take the Fahrenheit minus 32 times 5 divided by 9 and this is not some voodoo magic that I'm doing right here you guys I don't know this stuff I just googled it you know so this is the formula to change Fahrenheit to Celsius so uh, this is done now I did the conversion now what I want to do well remember you guys we sent these temp symbol into the props too like the F so let's use that to set current temperature to either this one or that one how are we going to do that? You guys know? Should be easy. If props.temp symbol is equal to Fahrenheit. If it's Fahrenheit, then current temp is equal to Fahrenheit. Else, current temp is equal to Celsius. Right? Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. Now, since we set it to this, now all I got to do is just pass this to my actual degrees right here. Save it. Hopefully, you guys are following. So, if props.cities exists, then we're going to give it current temperature. If it doesn't, we're just going to set it to empty. Let me go back here. Look at that. Now, this is clean. It's truncated. It's cut. We parsed the int. So it's 58 and 48 right now in Russia, but this is in Fahrenheit. If we click Celsius, bam, magic. Oh my God. Now it's 14 right now in LA, misty. And it's eight, clear. <laughs> it's clear in Russia. So bonus, bonus points. We can write a hook to see uh, to change the icons later on. Maybe that's a bonus that you guys can do later on. There you have it, you guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace and love.